Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be making this strawberry animation using Blender and look at some things like particle systems and see how to create fluid simulations in Blender even with a slow computer. Project files are going to be in the description so let's get started. As you can see there's a lot to unpack here so let's just dive in right away but uh, you can get the project files on my Gumroad page, my Patreon page and my YouTube membership page. Yeah so let's jump in and get started. Yeah, the first thing we're going to do is uh, look at how I made this strawberry explode. So let me just copy that. Actually, I'm, I already have it in my asset collection. I'm just going to search strawberry here. And I can see I already have a few here. Let me get that. Yeah, so I have my strawberry. So I want a few different versions of this. So I want some cut pieces. So I want to make one that is sliced. So I'm just going to get this. Shift D, duplicate that, uh, I can get rid of some of the leaves here. And I'm just going to select the middle of this. And just delete that. Just shift G to select the amount of face of face edge around an edge. So something like that. Hit F to fill it in. And uh, I can use Ctrl E, mark sharp. Give this an auto smooth. And this is going to make these very sharp, uh, which is not what I want. So I'm going to come in here and I normally change the angle smooth to something like 65. So that this stays smooth, but uh, this here stays sharp. But uh, you can see right now it lacks the face, uh, that front face. So you can go to Google and search for a texture like this, like this, and uh, just bring that in. So I'll create a new material and bring that image in. And then assign that face to that material. Then let's preview that. Come in here and just move this UV around. And we have a slice. Now, if you have a slice like this, then you can make other slices quite easily. All you have to do is come in here, add something like an empty, add a mirror, and select the empty, and turn on bisect. So now when you rotate this, you can see we easily make a slice we want. So I want that. And now I can apply this mirror and uh, uh, the next step is to make this explode. So I'm just going to move this to the side, duplicate this. This is going to be our main berry. Uh, so to make it explode, you just have to give it a particle system. And if you play back, you can see the particles are falling down. If you give it uh, an explode modifier, uh, the explode modifier will, will just use uh, the available particle system to disintegrate the mesh you have. I have to come in here and uh, just make sure that I'm not rendering any particles. So if I go to render, I can turn that off so that we're just seeing other particles. Now I want to make this explosive so let's start at frame 10 and end at frame 11. Now if we play back everything goes down. We don't need that many points so we can use about 20. If we play back you can see that's good. I'm going to go to velocity and uh, just increase the normal to something like 20. If we play back you can see we get that explosive berry in the same berry i can add something like a mesh a cube like this uh, add it inside the berry give it basically the same particle system i'm just going to call this explosion so i can come to this give it a new particle system and uh, i want it to be the explosive explosion particle system and uh, this time i uh, make sure that this is a different instance and uh, render as collection and this is going to be our collection. Let me just remove this, select these, call this uh, berries. And, uh, you can even add in some extra things like uh, these leaves here. So I can uh, add like that. And uh, I also added some water particles. I can see I even have some water particles in there. So you can also add those uh, cube, shade smooth and uh, just give it a new material. All these should be in the same particle system, in, in the same collection, strawberry. So now this, we can give it that strawberry collection, berries collection, so I can use it here. So if we play back, let's come here, give it a value of one, make sure the scale, and render as is one and you can see what we have we is we have replaced these pieces with uh, berries i'm going to randomize uh, the scale a bit and uh, also give this some random rotation so turn on random rotation rotation and uh, turn on dynamic give this some angular rotation here based on the velocity so 
a value of one. So things can rotate, can have some random rotation. You can even put this to two and you can see we have something like that. Uh, another thing we could do is increase the particle count to something like 100 and change. Uh, you should also make sure the life is longer or the length of the old timeline. Uh, if you want the particles to stick around, uh, the normal should be, shouldn't go, uh, yeah, something like that is good. One other thing I did, I didn't want to have any gravity because as you can see, I wanted the particles to just rotate around. So gravity will just make them fall down. So you go in fields, turn that down for this particle system. Uh, another thing I did, I wanted these particles not to go too far away. So you just have to insert this inside this so that it appears like the strawberry exploded. So I can go in instancing and make sure I don't turn, I don't have a meter showing. So now you can see it's like the berry is exploding into more berries. Yeah, one other thing I did is you can see when things explode, when this explodes, uh, these don't go far away, they stick around and then rotate around the can. To do that, all I did is uh, first I added a force, a drag force, and uh, this will slow down everything, as you can see. But I don't want it to slow, to slow down too much, so uh, I just animated the linear and angular strength of the drag. So about here is supposed to be zero. So it sets out at zero, make sure those keyframes are marked, and then goes up. So you can see, you can determine where you want, maybe somewhere there. You want the particles to be around, to stay around there. So you can come in here. I'm just going to move these keyframes closer to that, to that keyframe, to that frame. So we have the explosion and these stay around. Uh, another thing I did was make them orbit the can. So to do that, I just added a vo uh, vortex force. Okay, that's a bit too much. So let's do one. Yeah, and you can see now it's uh, there moving around. Now we just want a slight rotation, just like that. And uh, it seems these particles are too big, so you can scale them down a bit. The next thing we can look at is, so by the way, a time-lapse version of this is going to be on my second channel, top channel one on one too. Uh, as you can see, the way I animated this is just, I scaled it from zero. We want to make sure that everything appears like is coming out of uh, the berry. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and now it's time for the fluid simulation. Uh, the fluid simulation is actually the easy part. Figure a way to mix fluid simulations without using a lot of resources. So um, starting with a cube for the domain and uh, giving it uh, the fluid domain option. I'll make sure it's liquid. Make sure I'm centering it. Now we're going to be emitting the fluids, ejecting the liquid from here. So there is no point in having the domain starting from, from down there, there when the particles, when the water is not really going to go uh, there. So I'm just going to bring this up so that uh, our fluids, our domain is covering only the parts where the fluid is going to be. Otherwise we will we'll be just wasting computation uh, in that area. Scale this a bit horizontally and maybe a bit up a bit like that. Okay, so that's our fluid. And uh, since this is going to be just a fluid ejection like that. We never see the fluids uh, colliding into anything like a wall. So there is no reason for this boundary to have border collisions like this, as that also adds on, on computation power. Now we can start working on the source. So I'm just going to add a plane like this. I want to give it some extra a bit and uh, maybe round it off a bit so that we have fluid ejected from different angles. I'm going to parent this to this control P. Now, if you play back, it should stay on that. I'm just going to select that and uh, go to the fluids, make sure this is a flow and it should be liquid. 
inflow to push water into uh, this. So we can hit play. There, nothing is happening because we need to go under source and make sure that this is set to planner. Okay, so now we have the fluid is simulating, but because our fluids, uh, because our bounding box is open on, on uh, all areas, uh, the fluid is, is being ejected and then uh, because of gravity it's just flowing down into the mesh and then disappearing. So first fix is to remove gravity so we can go under the domain and uh, field weights, remove gravity and uh, the fluid now should be ejected and it's not going anywhere uh, because if you select the emitter you can see we don't have any initial velocity so just make sure that I'll have some initial velocity in the normal direction let's use a five so that we can eject other fluid uh, like that that seems too much we're having an issue here where the fluid is coming very becoming very unstable as you can see and the reason for that is because remember when we were animating these particles we added a few forces we added drag we also added some vortex and that is also those forces are also affecting the fluids so what we can do is get these fluids and add these forces and add them to a collection called forces one and uh, if we select the fluids now the domain we can go into the effector the fields weight and uh, we can make sure that we can create a new collection uh, we want this water to be affected by turbulence a turbulence force so add a turbulence force and i give it a new collection add it in a new collection call it uh, water forces and only forces in that collection will affect the water so i can come in here and select that water force collection now let me first disable the turbulence altogether give it a value of zero and now you can see our fluids are not really having any issue uh, again but it also seems that my fluid emitter is too big yeah so now you can see what we have yeah so what i like to do here is usually just add other meshing as well as i'm working so that i can see how uh, the, the liquid looks and right now it doesn't look very good so i'm going to go under the turbulence turbulence force give it a strength of two and see how if that helps at all uh, you can come to the remeshing part and uh, just let's increase the smooth positive to something like three and smooth negative to something like three as well i find that adds some detail onto uh, the mesh and uh, let me reduce the particle resolution the particle radius to point 1.5 uh, to get a more thinner fluid mesh and uh, i'm going to up the resolution to something like three to get more detail in the simulation and uh, you can already see that uh, we're getting something that looks better i'm also going to come back here to the particle to the inflow and just increase uh, this to something like five we need we just need to increase the subdivisions to get better detail you can play with the turbulence size or with the turbulence forces play with the size to get a uh, more de detailed turbulence can see now what we have so if you're doing simulations like this i wouldn't recommend going over 60 sub 64 subdivisions unless if you have the computer for it and uh, i found that uh, you don't really get that much difference uh you can just get more resolution by just playing with the mesh here playing with the uh, particle radius uh the upraise factor uh smooth positive and negative i uh, usually get more out of the simulation without adding more computation power uh, which will then uh, require more render time so yeah you play with these and uh, you get better results uh, most of the time and uh, we could go back to the turbulence bring that really high let's say let's do a 0.5 create a, let's say something like 20 and a strength of 
five. So you get something like that, but uh, if you want, you can also add an obstacle uh, for this water to to heat. So I could uh, add something like add something here just to block the water a bit and uh, I'll just give this a fluid type effector and uh, that should be enough to add some and let me just bring this down so that the fluid simulation starts a bit early now we can hit play uh, all you left with is materials uh, one thing you will notice is that uh, the mesh the fluid starts off like a cube like that and then so if you try rendering this at this stage it will show us a cube like that so what you can do is just select the domain and under visibility you can unmeet the viewport visibility so at, we want the visibility we want to render this starting at this frame before that when, when it's still a cube uh, we want these to be off so that we don't accident we, so so that we don't render that so this is what we have I think that's it uh, for the details of these water droplets you can use something like a water droplet generator add-on yeah, it gives you a really good droplet animation without spending too much time and uh, yeah links are going to be in the description thank you for watching I'll see you in the next video